everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jaylee. This is Jaylee's Corner. And this is my review for Empire. Season 4, Episode 3. Um, I enjoyed today's episode. It was pretty um, entertaining. I don't know why my hair looks so stupid. Um, probably because I didn't put it up in the bottom right. But we ain't gonna talk about that. Uh, <laughs> it was a good episode. I like how it kind of progressed. Again, you know, if you watch my videos... Uh, my other reviews and things, you know, I love progression within the story, progression within characters. I don't like stale stories. So, you know, you know, bravo, bravo to Lee Daniels for what he's doing with Empire. I feel there is a new feel to the show. It's not the same old even Cookie trying to get Lucius back because I kept saying that I didn't want that to be what this episode, this season was about. Um, I'm liking the different roll cookies having to take one. I'm liking how um Terrence Howard is having to play Lucius. It's a completely different character he's having to play. Um and I like that. I like I'm happy it kinda didn't go right back to the same old same old of Lucius and his craziness craziness and his foolishness and this all the sickness and the drama of it all. Um, so we see that the episode picks up and we see the Demi Moore character who was the nurse. She is on vacation. She's gone somewhere, but she's not in this episode. I have to say, okay, I'm happy about that. Again, I'm a person with, for Empire, I am not one where I'm like, oh my God, I love when they have all these cameos. I mean, Demi Moore was cool when she was on the season finale of the last episode, the, 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 the last episode of the season finale last season. And then, you know, she, we see that she did, you know, two episodes already this season. I don't need Demi Moore for a full season. I don't. I don't. I feel like they should have had a different person play that character. Because my thing is, I still see Demi Moore. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you, when, you see, when it's an actress or an actor playing a role, you want to see, oh, that's the nurse. It's Demi Moore. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I'm, you know, fickle about that or whatever. Um, so yeah, we see, I don't know where my arm is, I don't know if my tattoo is itching or what's going on with my damn arm. Um, so we see the Lucius is at home, but he's running on the treadmill. He's trying to get his leg stamina up because, you know, he has one leg, he has one prosthetic leg. So he's like, yeah, Claudia wants me to run on here like 30 minutes a day, but I'm already up to to 45 minutes. To get used to his, to his leg and everything and to be able to walk better, you know, it's basically physical therapy. Uh, rehab and you know Lucius is talking to because Cookie is there um Jamal Andre Hakeem and baby Bella and you know Lucius is basically telling them like look I need y'all to stop walking on eggshells around me I need y'all to tell me you know what I did to y'all you know my mom Leah mentioned that I was a monster so I need y'all to tell me the truth like what did I do to, to y'all each you know what did I do to each of y'all so of course they all looking around like should we tell him? Should we not tell him? So Hakeem, being Hakeem, he's like, well, you know, you punched me in the face once. And he's like, I did, why, would I, why would I do that, you know? And he was like, you know, you just did. So then Luke's like, I'm so sorry about that. You know, I don't know why I would do that. And he's like, that's just crazy. He then looks at Jamal. He's like, what did I do to you? And Jamal is like, you know, and he didn't want to say anything. He didn't want to say anything. And then Hakeem was like... Told him the trash can story. I'm looking like, oh, please don't break up the trash can story because that's where it was so sad. So Cookie, like, enough, you know, enough of this. No, we're not, no, we're not, we're not telling that story. Leave it be. He then says to Cookie, you know, well, you said that you were gone for 17 years. Where were you? And then she's like, you know what? I gotta go. Because Cookie is actually being featured in, I think it's Forbes magazine on this particular episode as being, the, you know, a woman of power and all that stuff. So she's like, I got, you know, stuff to do. I got to go. Um, the next thing we see is Mrs. Dubois. You know, Diana is sitting with her cubs. Yes, I say her cubs because she is definitely a lioness. So she's sitting with her three kids, you know, with um, Angelo, Warren, who was her son, who was the guy who's dating Jamal. I don't know the daughter's name yet. I can't think what her name is. But, you know, she's sitting there talking to them. And they're basically discussing how they are going to... Destroy Cookie Lion's children, you know, one by one by one. <laughs> Evil laugh inserted here for her. Uh, and so, Mr. Dubois is basically referencing her kids as, you know, the ten, the, yeah, the ten, the Wizard of Oz, you know, the Tin Man, the Scarecrow, and the Cowardly Lion. With 
Andre being the scarecrow because of his brain. His brain is his most prized possession. You know, the scarecrow always wanted a brain. Um, so that's his aspect of it. And she's like, okay, I want you to, you know, take it from him or do whatever. Right, make him go crazy, you know. And then um, she's in how she's going to ha handle Hakeem because Hakeem was, of course, a cowardly lion. And he is because he is over there, you know, fraternized with the enemies. And that's what the cowards do. And you ain't told your mom and your daddy nothing. And I don't even care that Lucia don't have it. I'm looking around that way. Y'all know how I be sometimes. Um, <laughs> and, you know, they, he hasn't talked. When I look this way, I can see myself. When I look this way, it's just different. Um, but, sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, she's going to take care of Hakeem. Because I don't like how Hakeem is still fraternized with the enemy. Um, and then we see Warren and say, like, yeah, so that would make Jamal the 10 man, you know, and I'm going to take his heart. You old slick, sly dog, you. And then Angela, who's sitting there, he drunk as a skunk. Well, he, he, he's, he's a functioning drunk right now. He's able to talk and speak and, and hold conversations. And he's like, oh, so who I'm supposed to handle? Toto. Because, <laughs> of course, he drunk as I was like, Angelo, you're drunk. And he's like, I might be drunk, but at least I ain't a slut whore. So I couldn't see his brother Warren, because, you know, Warren's slanking his body parts to be kicking it with Jamal. And his mom was like, you know, you need to just find your role in this, and, you know, you need to find the space in here, find your role, and make something happen, basically. And he kind of just looking around. He got a whole little beard and stuff now. You know, Angelo took losing Cookie really hard. But what he don't realize is your mama going to make it even worse. Like, y'all trying to get revenge on Cookie for something that she really didn't even do. Your son did all that. She didn't make that man confess all the crimes he did. And she did not make him help her do nothing. That was all him. So, you know, I'm going to need to kind of get over that. Um, But she does say to him, you know, the reason you need to find your place in this situation is because it's your fault that we even involved with his family in the first place because you started dating Cookie. So you can't be mad at us because you don't have a role in this when it's your fault we in this predicament in the first place. I mean, technically, y'all could have just walked away. You know, y'all, they broke up. Um, You still is, is influential in some sort of way because you still around. So it ain't like y'all is at the bottom of the barrel and y'all are also embarrassed. It's like, come on now, Mrs. Dubois. Come on now, Claire Huxville. Um, <laughs> so the next scene that we see is Jamal and Lucius is having a scene where um, Jamal has some... <sighs> keep smacking this. And this made me mad, too. Uh, but my mouth was dry, but whatever. Um, Jamal was trying to show or trying to, you know, um, jog Lucius's memory. So he's like, hey, Pop, you know, come to the, comp the piano. So he plays that song they made together. This is the melody part. And Lucius is asking questions like, you know, when you sit down and you write music, you know, how does it go? You know, do you have the words in your head? Like, basically saying, how does a person write? And it's hard to tell someone how you write. Because, you know, I write poetry and books and stuff like that. And it just comes to you. You know, it is literally sometimes when you're walking, when you're driving, when you're in the shower, when you're cooking some chicken. It can be anything. It also can be when someone says a phrase, your mind just starts to wonder. Um, I think that's why I be up. I'm like, I'm a night owl because my mind is just, is consistently turning. Um, so it's hard to even say, well, I can sit down at a computer and just start writing because sometimes I can sit down at a computer and it doesn't work. So I think that's the same way writers of music are. You have this different forms of um, inspiration. And that's what he was basically, basically telling Lucius. And so Lucius is like, well, what is this? Pointing to the sheet music. He's like, oh, well, that sheet music, you know, we put the things on there and we make a melody and all that stuff. And he's like, oh, so that's how you make a record? He's like, no, you know, we have to go to the studio to do that. So what does Lucius say? Well, take me to the studio. Okay. So we see that they, because they don't, you know, no one knows Lucius, you know, has this traumatic brain injury that he doesn't have a memory. So they have to basically sneak him into uh, Empire. Because, again, if he run into whoever, you know, and they start talking to him, they're going to realize that he don't know anything. Or he doesn't know, the, know them. Um, so they sneak into Empire. And who sneaks them in? Thirsty old ass. You know, when Thirsty first came on the scene back in, that, in season two, I believe, when Lucius was locked up. Um, for a little bit, he, I, I didn't think he would make it this long, but he's, you know, he's resilient. He's stuck around and he pops up here and there. And when he pops up, I'm always eager to see what is Thirsty going to, you know, bring to the screen this particular time. So he pops up and he like, you know, 
I do this. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm able to sneak in and out because they're trying to again sneak Lucius into Empire. But he says to Lucius, hey, boss, did you really lose your memory or it's like a Lucius trick? And he was like, you don't, you don't know me, you know, thirst, thirst, good, thirsty. And he was like, thirsty. That's a really nice, that's a unique name. And he liked the suit and everything. So when, you know, thirsty asked him, did you really not remember? He was like, I think I remember somebody who dresses like you. And he was like, oh, okay. And he walks away. And he's like, does he always dress like that? And Jamal was like, every damn day. Because he does. He's always in a bright ass uh, old pimp suit. Um, so the next scene that we see is Cookie's at the, the record label. And she's, you know, talking with staff. We see Becky is there. You know, Gab, uh, Gabrielle sitting back. She, she, look, she looking good. Okay, we know that she had um, weight loss surgery. And she's been actively losing weight, you know, with, with that particular way of losing weight. And she looks good, you know what I'm saying? I feel like she was herself before. She's going to be herself after, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, she look on here, Becky. Go on here, Gabby. So, Cookie is talking to the other staff. And they're basically going over this 20 for 20. Um, how they're going to do 20 albums within the year for their 20-year anniversary. And Shine come walking in with a dog. First of all, why do people bring dogs into buildings? I mean, not into buildings, but like, you sh I don't think people should bring their animals into the workplace. You know, keep your damn dog at the house. I don't want them shitting all over the floor. So, you know, he's there. And Cookie, like, you know, you should know that you don't have to come to a meeting that I can start without you. And he like, man, whatever. You know, I'm here because I got to get my information and whatnot. And so she's like, well, since you're here, you know, that's your place in the lineup. So Becky Point, and he's number five. He has one album. And he like, one album, you know, y'all can have your numbers, but, you know, I need more than one album, so whatever. And she's like, you know what? Um, and I'm like, why he act like he deserves more albums, though? I mean, I think he's a producer. I, I'm If he's saying he wants to produce more than one album, okay, I can get that. But if he want to, like, be on another album, no, sir, no, thank you. But he like, you know, I, I own a stake in this company. You know, I, I, I deserve more than this and blah, 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 blah. And she's like, you know... Whatever, you know, I don't care. He like, you can ask Lucius. Lucius, no. And she was like, Lucius ain't here. I'm running things now. This is my company. Yes, Cookie come through and let them know who's running things right now. And I like that. It's Cookie stepping into another role. And I feel like when Lucius gets his memory back in whatever capacity, whether he gets his memory back and he goes back to being the Lucius we know, or if he's a blend of the new and the old. And him and Cookie can hopefully run the Empire together. And this show can go on for at least another four seasons. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I like Empire as long as the story makes sense. So, um, she, what was she doing? Yeah, saying how she didn't have to ask Lucius nothing. So, she then she's having flashbacks. Um, because it was one episode earlier when she was in the office and she was, I forgot to mention that she was in the office taking pictures for this Forbes, uh, list that she's on. She's taking, you know, the promo, the promo pictures. And when the flashes is going off and they were saying, you know, look to the left. And she looks to the left and the lights flash. And she remembers her mugshot being taken, you know, at the camera flashing at that particular point. So, this point when she's saying, I don't have to ask Lucia's nothing. You know, I got, I got bitches when she walks away. She has another flashback of herself in prison, and it's when the correctional officers, like, walk on her to her cell. You know, the people are like, oh, you some fresh meat. You look good. And you know how they do, you know, cackling or, heckling or whatever. And the correctional officer is like, you know, you're a pretty girl. So, you know, they'll don't, you know, don't trust anyone. They'll do whatever just to cut your face up. You know, just, just don't trust people, you know, because they ain't here to help you. It's basically what he said. You know, don't trust anyone here, period. And she's locked up in her cell. So, we see that particular scene. And then she kind of, she, then the next thing I see, she's talking to Shine. And he's in the office. And he's like, you know I deserve one one, one album cookie. And she's almost ignoring him. Like, whatever. Like, you know, I deserve more albums, blah, 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 blah. I own 25 hours in the company. You know, I need at least 10 albums. You want 10 out of 20? No, nah, bro, that ain't how it go. So, she's like, you know, I'll give you three. And he's like, well, no, I don't want three. Give me seven. She, they agree on five. And, you know, we leave it at that. He'll produce five albums. Next. Um, the next thing we see is Thirsty and he's talking to Dre. Now, remember, 
Las Vegas is still, you know, investigating Lucius's accident. So, you know, Dre is nervous because he know Juliana didn't do it. It was him and Shine. Now, my thing is, I would just blame Shine and then, like, kill him or something. Anywho, that's just my thought process. Um, but, you know, Thurk is telling Dre, you know, they still can't find Juliana. They've been looking, 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 looking. We don't know where she is. And the police is basically wanting someone else to back up your story. And he was like, why? And it was like, well, you know, it was just me and Juliana there. It was no one else. <clears throat> and Thurk's just like, well, I don't know. But they need, they just, that's what they're kind of looking for. And he's like, the fact that she's missing should be proof enough. You know, what else, why else would she be missing unless she has something to do with it? And Thurst's like, you know, okay, you know, I've been looking into it. You know, don't worry about it. But you sure we're on the same page about everything? He's like, yeah, you know, we good. So from there, we see that Andre go to see Officer Lady. Now, I figured out later on as I was watching the episode, as I looked up her name, um, her name is Pamela Rose. And I like that she's on this show since I now found out that Survivor's Remorse was canceled. So she won't be on that show anymore. So let's hope that she, you know... Becomes a regular on this particular show. Um, I Because Andre consistently needs a, a female partner. You know, and they killed off his wife. And uh, Nessa gone. Uh, did they kill Nessa? Where did Nessa go? I can't remember. But it doesn't matter. So, you know, he goes to see Officer Pamela, who is a New York police officer. And he's basically telling her, you know, why I feel like you are the one pushing the... the Las Vegas police that keep questioning me about it. I don't know why you keep doing that. Y'all need to be going somewhere to find out who did that to my father. You know, we know that Juliana did it and she's probably in hiding because she knew, she know that she should not have did that to my daddy. And, you know, she's had him, she's hiding from him because of his wrath. She's afraid. And then she's like, you know what? You're sweating and you're, uh, she said you're sweating you are nervous. No, you're sweating, you're out of breath, and you're deflecting. Those are all signs of the lion. So tell me, you know, what's really going on? Because, again, she's a cop. And then you like, hear, like, the police coming or something, so Andre, of course, leaves. But who put Andre in that hat? I'm like, is this Harlem Knights? And did he say, let me talk to you for a tick? How old is Andre supposed to be? And what year is Empire Run in? I mean, I could have swore it was, like, in the current time. So I'm like, who says, can I talk to you a tick in the hat? That looked like it was, you know, in the wardrobe of Harlem Knights. And then he had, like, suspenders. I was just confused. Anywho, so, yeah. They had the whole scene and that part was over. Um, So, we then see Cookie having more flashbacks in this next scene. And she's having flashbacks of a girl who, like, walked up to her at the prison. And they're like, you know, what's your name? You know, where you from? And she's like, I'm from Philly. And she was like, oh. Well, probably Philly. And then, you know, Cookie kind of ignoring her. And then the girl go to reach in her back. So Cookie, of course, thinking what the P.O. said. I mean, the C.O. said, you know, don't trust anyone. She punched a girl in the face. Nah, bitch. And she punches her. And the girl like, I was trying to use some shower shoes. And she threw the shower shoes at her. Because, you know, that was her thing of, she just remembering her time in prison and things that she had to go through about not trusting people. And we see that her and Andre are actually at the bank because they're having to get a loan for this whole 28 albums in one year for 20 year anniversary situation. So, when they walk up into the bank, Andre like, oh, I was expecting to see blah, blah, blah. And the guy like, oh, he's not available, so I'll be doing this. You know, my name is... Whatever, whatever, whatever. It was a black guy who was all acting all uppity and uppity and uppity. And he's like, you know, come have a season we can talk. Um, And he basically said, you know, we can't approve your loan. And Dre like, why? You know, everything's in order. You know, we've been consistently growing for the past 20 years. Our portfolio is great. Why not? And Cookie's in there. She's looking. And he was like, you know, we're just not in the business right now to, you know, lend capital or lend money to... Um, record label was the music music people and Cookie like you wasn't gonna give us the money period you know you had your man made up before our file even hit your desk I can tell it I would cause you <laughs> I would call you um, a bougie coward but I'm the CEO of Empire so I'm not gonna go there with you um, she's like I got things to do so she get, gets up and she leaves but you know she let him know I know what you're doing here. You did it. She said you did it just so that you can say, 
I did not ever. You did it for the clout to say that you was able to stop us from doing something. But I'm going to go do what I need to do regardless. And she put her shades on. And she shed shades away. Go ahead, Cookie. So, um, we see Lucius and Jamal at the, at the, the studio. And he's just basically showing him the soundboard. You know, how things are made and how you add this to this and, this and stuff. And Lucius is paying attention. And he's, it's interesting to him a little bit. But he's saying it's not connecting to him. And, you know, he even played Lucius a snippet of the music they made. And it just, it wasn't connecting. So, he's like, can we sit down and can we just talk? So, he was like, sure. You know, that's fine. Um, wait. No, that's not what happened. Um, apart from that part. He did mess with the soundboard. <laughs> I keep looking at messages. He did look at the soundboard, and but at that moment, we see that his wait, yeah, duh, his boyfriend Warren pops up and surprises him, and Jamal is like, "What? Are, you know, kind of like, what is he doing here?" So he kind of has Lucius stay in the room because again, no one is supposed to see Lucius. So he goes out to try to talk to Warren, but Warren kind of see Lucius sitting in the background, like, "Ain't that your dad?" He's like, oh, no, that's just the engineer. He closes the door because, again, he doesn't, he doesn't want anyone to see his dad just yet. And so he kind of just spins Warren and says, you know, I have to finish this, this record, so we're going to be in here working. You know, I'll talk to you later. From there is when Lucius was saying that the sound, you know, the, the music wasn't connected to him. And then someone else busting the dang on door. I'm like, for y'all to be trying to keep it a secret, how is everything just so freely and all willy-nilly? So um, it's Shine. Shine come in like, hey, Lucius. So Lucia's like, hey, moonshine, moonshine. I guess that's what he really called him. He like, really, Lucia, that's where we're going with that? He was like, we we used to make music together. And Shine realized he talking like he trying to remember stuff. So he like, yeah, yeah, we did. And Shine then starts talking, saying random stuff like, yeah, remember we made that song with this person, this person, this person, and he added in somebody that didn't make no song. He had, it was like, it's like saying, remember we made an album with Jay-Z, Beyonce, Bob the Builder, and Farrah Fawcett? And he said it like, yeah, remember that, Lucius? And Lucius was like, no, I don't remember that. But I remember that we were friends, And but why didn't we ever make music together? But Shine recognized something was wrong. So he then starts playing a song they like, yeah, we, we did this song a long time ago. We never finished it. I remixed it. You should listen to it. And when he play it, he cuts it up. Lucia starts having these flashes. These flashbacks of his old life, of him being drowned in the pool, of him being violent. And, of course, he has this little freak out moment or whatever. And he's like, no, no. And he runs out. And Lucia, and Sean like, man, what's wrong with him? Yeah, he he must, what do you say? He must be, oh, he's slow, not nah, hunt. He thinking because of the accident, Lucius is mentally, you know, um, incapacitated. Not, he just really has a memory issue. It's not that he's, um, it's a brain injury, basically. And Jamal, like, get your damn hands off me. And he, you know, leaves to go after his father. So, um, what else, what else, what else? Okay, so this is the scene I was talking about. <laughs> so, Lucius and Jamal are at the house, and they're, you know, sitting there talking and everything. And, you know, he's like, yeah, I can see in Sean's face. I can see in his uh, eyes that he was a violent man. I knew we were old friends, and I can see that he was looking in my eyes trying to find whatever violent history that we had. And he probably didn't see it in my eyes. And he was like, "Was you know, was I a violent man? And Jamal, of course, kind of wasn't addressing it. And he said, you know... I just want, you know, he was just wondering about stuff. Jamal then tells him, you know, a breakdown of the trash can story. And if anybody who wasn't watching Empire in season one out, you know, the trash can story is basically when Jamal was six, you know, Lucian put him in the trash can. And what some people might know or might not know is that really happened to Lee Daniels. His father really did put him in a trash can for... Um, his gay tendencies and things like that. So Jamal does explain, like, you know, when I was six, y'all was having a party. I came downstairs in mom's heels and, like, a scarf, and you were upset because of it, and you put me in a trash can. And, you know, Lucian was like, that's so hateful, you know, that's horrible. I was so wrong. I can't believe it. And Jamal was like, well, no, you know, you were raised different. It was a different era then, you know. He's like, no, you know, there's no excuse for me doing it to you. I'm so sorry, son. I'm like... 
you're giving Jamal all kind of fatherly, you know, um, apologetic things that he's probably been wishing for his whole life. And Jamal said, you know, was a, you know, for a while I did hate you, and we we got past it, and you know, we we were okay. And then, you know, Lucius said, you know, thank you, son, for trusting me with the truth. Meaning, all Lucius is want, all Lucius is wanting them to do is tell him the truth and let him handle it bit by bit by bit. He can't get better if he doesn't know his past. And y'all can't keep just not telling him stuff. He's not going to get any more memories. And that's just the truth. Um, so, the next thing we see is Cookie. And as I would say, she's in the lion's den. Because she... Um, it's at this photo shoot for the magazine. And who was there? Mrs. Dubois. And she being petty, she gossiped with other ladies. Saying how, you know, Empire was denied their loan. You know, Cookie don't have no education. She only know about prison. And Cookie like, you guys gonna say to me? You know, you can say it to my face. Oh, well, no. I was just saying how, you know, violent, basically how violence begets violence. And, you know, we don't want any parts of that. So, she has another flashback. And this flashback is of the same girl she punched in the face coming to talk to her saying, you know, look, I should not, I should not, have, I should not have approached you like that. I know how girls can feel get down. I should have approached you differently. But, you know, we cool. You know, you see those girls over there? They all from Philly. You know, she from South Philly, East Philly, was all the Phillies. We all the Phillies. We all here. You know, so and so. And she said, like, how many years you got? It's like, well, I got 17 years. And then she's like, yeah, well, so-and-so has these many years. So-and-so has 20 years. So-and-so has life. And she was like, but guess how many guess how many of them are here? And it ain't because of their man. Meaning they're all there because of some man they was with who they doing time for. Um, and they're all there together. She's like, so we the Philly crew. And, you know, she just embraces Cookie and says, you know, I was giving you shower shoes because you don't want to be walking bare feet in the shower with some of the nasty people we have here. You know, we, we have toothpaste. We, ha we have things to help you while you're here. You know, we meaning you were told not to trust us, but you can. For this instance, we don't know what's going to happen later. Because, again, she was in prison for 17 years. So, we don't know. So, she then comes back to reality. And um, she's sitting there with, you know, Diana and them. And she's just feeling the... Tension, the tension of it or whatever. And she's like, you look, you know what? I can't do this. Um, you know, Diana, I know we had our issues, but we need to put that stuff in the past and move on. She then says, yes, we were denied alone. All our eyes, all our eyes were dotted, all our teeth was crossed, and they, you know, the guy still denied me for his own reasons. And I can't be sitting here, you know, worried about what you're saying. I need to go find a bank who believes in me and believes in what I'm trying to do. And then one of the ladies, because as we know, that's what Diane was trying to make her do. To have to go, you know, drag her knuckles somewhere else to do whatever else. But one of the ladies at the photo shoot says, they did that to me too. And it was a, a Caucasian woman. And she was like, when well, my husband died, he left me with two kids and, you know, this whole business. And I just needed it alone to get us through the next quarter. And they denied me. And she was like, it was because, you know, I wasn't a man. And she was like, so I understand what you're going through. And she was like... Thank you. And then she went, went to walk away. And she was like, I'm going to give you $10 million for your 20 for 20. And Cookie was like, what, $10 million? And she was like, yeah, you know, I'm behind you. We need to stand. We need to support each other as women. So, yep, I'm in for $10 million. And then all the other ladies was like, me too, me too, me too. You get $10 million and you get $10 million. Can I get $10 million? No? Anybody? Anywho, so Cookie like, okay, I guess I can stay. And, you know, Diana is like, okay, I guess you won this one, you know. And you're right, we should bury the hatchet. And then she grabs Cookie's hand. And I'm and Cookie look at her like, what you up to, Mr. Dubois? I hope Cookie not naive enough to think that Mr. Dubois is done with her. She is not done with her by a long shot. So, there was a small scene. We also come to find out that the banker that denied Cookie's loan was the cousin of Diana. She set that up. Because when she left the little photo shoot, she get in her car and who was there? The guy. He's like, yeah, cousin, I canceled that and they didn't get it. And she was like, let's go. Because, of course, it didn't work. She got the money another kind of way. Um, we see Hakeem at home and Tiana's there with the baby. Basically, you know, a nigga come over and she wants to take baby Bella with her. And Hakeem ain't for it. He's like, you know, she can't go with you. She doesn't know you yet, you know. You've been gone for five months. She just needs some time. And she's holding baby Bella. And baby Bella is crying. 
and she stops crying with Tiana. And, you know, she basically says, you know, I know it'll take time, but don't forget, I'm still her mother. Your mother was gone for 17 years, and she's still your mother. And so I need you to remember that. I agree, you know, we shall see how that would go. But not having Anika on the show, for me, I didn't miss her. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't know how that sounds, but I'm like, she can come or she can go. Um, what's the last two scenes that we see? Andre goes home, and when he walks out on his, his balcony, we see the de Detective Pamela watching him from across. So, I don't know if she got a hotel room over there or whatever, but she see him, he see her. At first, he get mad, and then she call him like, I'm not on duty, so you don't need your, your lawyer. And then they start stripping. So, I'm like, they played a weird game with strip poker with all the cars on the balcony with she over at one building with some binoculars. He at his building, and they just stripping for each other. If they like it, I love it. Um, we see Jamal still being played by Baby Dubois, Warren. You know, he's like, you know, I just feel like you don't want me to meet your father. And why do you not trust me to meet him? Are you ashamed of me? Are you ashamed of him? You don't trust me. If you don't trust me, you know, I get it. And Jamal falls for it because he's a sap. Yes, I said it. And he tells Warren that his father has a traumatic brain injury and he doesn't remember stuff. If this is supposed to be a family secret. Y'all, you didn't let Shine know. Now you got Warren knowing. You know, Hakeem told Tiana. Who else gonna know, okay? It's just too many damn people that know the secret. Lord Jesus. And, you know, the last thing we see is Cookie coming home. And Lucius is in the room. He's, like, painting on the wall or something. And he's like, you know, it helps him relax. So Cookie was like, okay, well, I'm gonna lead you to it. And she starts to walk away. And then she stopped. She said, Lucius. You asked where I've been, you know, for 17 years. And, you know, I want you to know I was in prison for 17 years. And he's like, was it my fault? You know, did I do it? And then she was like, yeah, it was. And then he's like, you know, I, I want to know everything. I want to know what I did. You know, what did I, what did I do? How did I end you up in prison? I want to know everything that happened. And hopefully, I hope she's up to talking about it. Because that can be a whole episode showing how... She ended up in prison. Maybe talk about her times in prison to help him remember and recall some stuff. So, you know, I think that would be a good next episode. But that was the whole episode. You know, it was entertaining. I liked it. You know, I'm about to watch Star. Let's see how that goes. So, I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. I'm going to drink some water so I'll stop smacking my lips. But until next time, have a good night, people.